What's going on guys, it's Jeramon. Welcome back to another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. Today's episode, it's a kind of a refreshing take because usually we have a signature sneaker debut and the rule on NBA Kicks is that if someone debuts a brand new signature sneaker, they automatically get the number one spot. But there is no signature sneaker debut this week, so I literally was just able to pick my favorite sneaker that I saw. So I know you guys are excited about that. I'm excited to share what my number one pick was as well. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the episode. I'll see you guys on the other side. Starting off the list at number 10, we have PJ Tucker with the Converse All-Star BB Jet. Converse has been putting out a surprising number of new colorways for really all of their on-court silhouettes. And I say surprising because when you go to hoop at the gym or the courts or wherever, I mean, how many Converse on-court models do you see? For me, it's a really rare sight, but I'm loving that Converse isn't staying stagnant and still creating new colorways just like this. Now, while I'm not a huge fan of the color theory on this colorway, these do still offer up a unique look with an ink drop design on the upper, and of course that loud color palette, which I just feel that the choices in color are a little too juvenile. To me, they feel more like a GS colorway than a full-size run one, but nonetheless, the creativity is there, and you definitely can't say that these don't stand out on the court. Next up at number 9, we have Rudy Gobert with the Nike GT Jump. So when Nike announced their Greater Than series back in March, they did mention that the GT Jump would be releasing later in 2021. But I didn't know they literally meant the very, very end of 2021. But I guess it's better late than never. And here we are with a solid Rudy Gobert PE. Using a sand upper alongside Jade Hits, this player exclusive offers up a unique look that's capped off with Gobert's logo on the tongue, but overall I'm just really impressed with the GT Jump's design as a silhouette with a very modern look with that eclipse plate looking midsole, but then gives you some serious nostalgia with that Hyperfuse looking upper that brings me back to the early designs of the Hyperfuse line. I mean, look, if this was 2011, this would be a top three selection on this list, no doubt. But sneakers have come a long way, so they'll have to settle for nine. Next up at number eight, we have Fred Van Vliet with the Leaning Speed 8. So I don't know who you guys are voting in for all-star starters this year, but I had a really tough time trying to figure out who the second guard in the East should be. I mean, I got DeRozan locked in for a spot. He's a guaranteed on my ballot for sure. But the second guard, that's a pretty tough debate for me. And I don't really know who to go with, but Fred Van Vliet definitely has to be in that conversation. He's having a great year. But for now, let's just talk about his kicks first. This latest colorway of the Speed 8 uses a similar color scheme to those undefeated Kobe 5s with a gold, purple, and red color scheme, but Li Ning adds a graphic on the upper for another layer of depth. But overall, this color scheme fits the silhouette well, even though it may not be the most original one. Okay, so now that we talked about his sneakers, I mean, I really want to know, guys, who are you voting in for that second guard in the East? Let me know in the comment section below. Coming in at number seven, we have Donovan Mitchell with a new colorway of the Don issue number three. Adidas comes correct with yet another colorway of the Don issue number three, this time featuring a bright gradient color scheme that uses yellow, crimson, and teal alongside a graphic on the upper that definitely have some Keith Haring vibes. If you take a close look at the tongue, you'll also see a proven wrong model on the strap, which definitely adds some character. But overall, this is just a standout colorway for the silhouette, thanks to its bright and hard to miss makeup. But of course, Adidas is playing coy with us and not dropping any Spider-Man or Venom colorways of the Don issue number three, even though both Venom and Spider-Man have already released in theaters. What are you doing over there? Next up at number six, we got DeMar DeRozan with a new PE of the Kobe 6 Pro Troll. 
So this colorway is not perfect whatsoever, but we all know that the Kobe 6 as a silhouette just kind of holds some sort of spell over all Kobe fans. So it's really hard for me not to talk about every single new colorway that I see of them, but due to your guys' request, I only picked one. Both Malik Monk and Keldon Johnson wore their own colorways of the sixes as well, but I'm going to give DeRozan's pair the edge here with an incredible gradient fade on the upper, which is oddly paired with a yellow outsole. That outsole paired with the black hits make these feel like a custom job with the Del Sol colorway as a starting point, and that fails to make these feel new and exciting, not to mention that that yellow is just odd with the other colors on the upper, but at the end of the day, I still rather wear these over the other two colorways, and that's why I'm giving them the edge at the number six spot. Oh, and one more time just for good measure because I feel very strongly about this, DeRozan is definitely a lock to be an all-star starter. Next up at number five, we have DeAndre Ayton with a custom pair of Puma Court Riders. Now these customs may not be as complex or thematic as some of the other customs that we've seen this season already, but I actually really appreciate the simple approach that these went with. Using a basic Phoenix home color scheme, you'll find this custom's character with that Suns logo patch on the toe box, which is kind of an odd placement for a logo, but on this silhouette, it's really actually the only place that makes sense. And if you take a look at the heel, you'll also find a dominating tag for some punniness. It may not be the cleanest custom in the world, as you can see some of the paint chipping off, but the exposed stitching, the patchwork, all of that fit right in with Puma's basketball branding. And for that cohesiveness, I got to give these props. At number four, we have De'Aaron Fox with the Nike GT Cut. Swipe of the Fox debuts a brand new colorway of the GT Cut, which is not inspired by a fox, but instead a jungle cat. Using a two-tone design with a neutral color scheme, that leopard, cheetah, or jaguar print on the medial side just makes sense with this silhouette, since the GT Cut is designed to cater to a quicker playstyle for players who prefer speed and agility, much like a jungle cat. Now, I'm not a big cat zoologist, so I don't know the exact print that these are, but I do feel that Nike missed on an opportunity to hook Fox up with a Fox-inspired colorway. However, Fox fur print just isn't as dynamic as a jungle cat one, so I understand the decision, but still, a fox wearing cat fur. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Next up at number three, we have RJ Hampton with the Lee Ning Power. In case you didn't know, RJ Hampton is sponsored by Lee Ning. And here, they hook him up with a player exclusive colorway, which isn't original whatsoever, but they do hit with nostalgia, which means that it's almost impossible for me not to dig them. Obviously, using that iconic Grinch color scheme, this colorway is pretty straightforward with a volt and green upper with subtle hints of crimson, complementing some nice branding with RJ's number on the medial toe as well as his logo on the tongue. I also want to know from you guys what you think about RJ's logo on the tongue. For me, it actually looks a little too complicated, a little too cluttered. I mean, if I didn't know that this was RJ Hampton's logo, I would have no idea who it's for. Coming in as our runner up, we have Rui Hachimura with a PE of the Air Jordan 36. Ever since Rui entered the league as the first Japanese born lottery pick in NBA history, Jordan Brand has been hooking him up with some incredible player exclusives. And while these aren't as amazing as some of his previous ones, it's still great to see Rui back on the court. Using a very patriotic color scheme to match with those Wizard City Edition uniforms, this colorway uses that red, white, and blue color scheme full front, but the upper does have a gradient fade from blue to white to red, and the also has a marbled pattern for some variety, while the tongue features one of my favorite logos in the league. I do feel, however, that this colorway is missing some of those gold hits that the Wizards uniforms use, but overall, it is a vibrant PE that completes the game day fit perfectly, and that's why we got them here as our runner up. Finally, at number one, we have LeBron James with the Nike LeBron 8 V2 Low. 
LeBron brings back an old fan favorite with the Sprite 8 Lows, which feature an ultra clean blue, white, and Vogue color scheme. I mean, just look at those guys. The color blocking is absolutely on point, and it just looks incredible on the hardwood as well, which is probably the reason why Nike decided to retro these for a second run, because when these originally came out back in 2011, the sneaker community was all on them instantly making them a fan favorite. It also helps that I'm a fan of Sprite over 7up, but you know what, now that I think of it, I've never seen a 7up sneaker before. Hmm. Huh. Looks like 7up needs to step up their sneaker game. Look, at the end of the day, the Sprite LeBron 8 V2 lows were hands down my favorite sneaker of the week. And they most definitely quenched my thirst for some old school sneakers. And that's why they officially land at the number one spot as the best sneaker worn in the league during week eight of the 2021-22 NBA season. If you guys enjoyed this week's episode, please consider dropping me a thumbs up because it helps me out a ton. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more sneaker related content just like this. The Mellow MB ones from Puma Performance Review is coming out very, very soon. So make sure you subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss that video. But anyways, my name is Jaren. It's been great having you. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.